Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about sales calls and how to not literally suck at closing sales when you're on a sales call. You've already dedicated so much time to nurturing the relationship with this person. You're getting on a call and it's finally time to like seal the deal where you're actually gonna get paid for your time and this person's actually gonna get the help that they need in whatever niche or service that that is. And a lot of people really struggle with like the transition from getting on the call to closing the sale or just not getting like so freaking nervous before the call that they sabotage themselves before the call even starts. So we're gonna be going through a few formulas, if you will, of ways you can be more successful with sales, make them feel easy, make them feel positive for you, and for your prospective client and just overall give you more like assurance and predictability in your income because it really is the worst to feel like you are good at all the elements of business except for closing sales and therefore your income suffers. So without further ado, let's get into it. If y'all are new here, my name is Emily. I have been self-employed for almost five years now. I am a business mentor. I also own a copywriting and content creation agency, and I got my start as a health coach, and I'm obsessed with online business and entrepreneurship. So every single Wednesday, I post a video like this, a very tangible training on topics relating to growing an online business, and then every Monday, I post an episode of my podcast, The First Million Podcast. And on those episodes, I'm talking about things like growing growing and increasing your financial freedom and standing in life, things relating to financial responsibility, just like self-employed lifestyle, that type of thing. So if you are maybe not so interested in being self-employed, but you want to grow your income and your wealth and become a better steward of your finances, that might be a good place to be. But either way, all of that is featured on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and join the family. And if you ever have a request for a video that you want to see made, you can always reach out to me in my DMs on any of my socials. I will link all of those down below. But I post every single day on TikTok and Instagram. So check me out there. And as always, if y'all are interested in getting help with a business idea that you have, with a business that you currently have going and you need some mentorship advice, my general interest form and the link to book in for a free consultation is linked down below. Let's get into the video because I have, we're, we're going to be approaching this somewhat mathematically. I want you to stick with me. I've kind of, when I, when I was laying out my notes, I realized that my, they were kind of coming out as like equations in a way, because I really do think that every element of a successful sales call is built up by like other little mini elements, if you will. Stick with me. I'm going to have my editor put these little formulas across the screen as I talk about them and we'll get into it. But I want to start out by saying that sales don't have to be scary. They don't have to be icky. They don't have to be like your least favorite part of your business. Their sales calls are not even something that I think about anymore. Of course, in the beginning, you're going to be nervous. I used to get so nervous. I would literally start sweating and like freaking out before a call and on the call, I would be so tense that afterwards I felt like I needed to like take a nap. But over time and with practice, you will get better at sales calls. And the more success that you see, the more you're going to be inclined to relax, go more organically and authentically into these situations. So let's talk about how we're going to get you there. Okay, our first equation to getting better on sales calls is to allow yourself to have more practice, aka you need to book more sales calls. Booking more sales calls equals two specific things added together. I told y'all we were getting into the formulas here. So lead generation plus the calls to action that you use in your content are going to directly combine and relate to the amount of sales call bookings that you have. If you don't have bookings, you're never gonna get better at sales calls because you're not gonna be practicing at all. So let's break down calls to action, lead generation, and my advice on those topics. So lead generation is kind of my specialty. I feel like people actually hire me a lot specifically for that topic because I teach a very proactive type of lead generation. So if you're listening to this, you're like, what the heck am I even supposed to be doing? What are you talking about? That's your sign book in for a consult with me because a lot of times, even just on a free call, I'm able to kind of explain what that looks like. But in the simplest terms to not take up all your time today in this video, because this is not a lead generation video. Lead generation means that you are able to identify who your ideal client is, where they are in the industry. So in the online space where they're spending their time as far as when they're gonna make purchases, where they're doing research, and you know how to initiate contact with those people and then lead that forward into a sales setting and situation. So. I teach a very proactive method of lead gen, meaning my clients know who their ideal client is, where they hang out online, how to initiate conversation with them, and then verbally convert that just basic conversation into a sales call where they then have a direct contact with that person. 
So again, people hire me specifically to learn that, but you need to have some type of lead generation strategy in mind, whether you invest in mentorship or you get into a course, lead gen is essential. Next is your calls to action. How, when you write content, do you make it clear that the point of all this is for people to actually talk to you, to book in for a call so they can actually understand what it is you can offer them on a deeper level, right? We can only communicate so much through social media, even though I sit here and record YouTube videos all the time and I sit on a podcast sometimes for almost an hour, there's only so much I can convey when I'm not customizing the information to you. So when I'm copywriting and I'm writing calls to action, indicating to people that they need to go to the link in my bio, they need to click this form and book a call in this way, I make sure that I'm doing that in a diversified way, that it's not exhausting people, that I'm writing really clearly with great messaging so people actually read all the way down to the call to action. So it really comes down to like your whole structure and matrix of copywriting in general. Um, If that's something you're struggling with or you don't have any education on, again, a great place to look into investing. I do have a few spaces that open up throughout the year to actually be a copywriting client of mine where I will actually write your copy for you. It's kind of a boutique service that I offer. If you're interested in that, you can indicate that on the same general interest form as I link for everything. So that's kind of under the marketing services umbrella. But some of you guys are gonna be like, I want to learn how to do it myself. Some of y'all may have tried and you're like, no, I need help writing content that people read with effective calls to action. So they're actually clicking my links and booking in for calls. Okay. So now we're assuming we've got some calls of booked. We've got our calendar filling up with prospective clients. So now we need to focus on our on the call energy and strategy. So having effective on call energy, meaning energy that's going to lead actually to a sale is going to be the culmination of two things. Again, back to the formula. We have effective on-call or in-call energy is the total of how much you pay attention to your client and how much you do not talk. (laughs) I know that sounds a bit confusing, but everybody on sales calls needs to talk less. My job on a sales call with a client is like literally let them talk 90% of the time. And I just fill in the details based on the context clues that I gather from what they're saying. And then I provide the solution and wrap it up. If you find that you are sitting on sales calls, nervously talking and sweating your way through and just like running your mouth and you don't even know what you're saying half the time, but you don't know what to do and like how to be quiet and how to like suggest that your client offers you some information, This should be the thing you're focusing on is how do I talk less and get a better result? How do I ask questions of my client that allow them to expose what they need help with, what they're struggling with, what they're willing to do to get to their goals? Like they will offer all of that to you if you just ask the right questions. So learning that, investing in a sales strategy to know what to ask and how to sit back and listen actively, that is 11 out of 10 as far as skills go to close more sales. Now you're combining that with focusing on the client versus focusing on the thing that you're selling. It is really easy on sales calls to get so focused on, okay, let me tell you all the details of the program that you're going to be, you know, potentially buying, how long it is, how amazing it is, the success people have had. That is when you lose people. When you look through, you know, your Zoom camera, you look on screen and you see people sitting there kind of like, Uh, just fading away. You can tell the energy is like, you know, they're, they're getting bored. Like the energy is dying. That is generally because you're making it about you and the program or the offer versus making it about the problem that your client has and them as a person. Again, let them tell you what they need. Let them tell you what they're interested in. And as long as that aligns with what you can provide, you can then customize a minimal number of details about your offer to that person, to their needs, and it's way more relevant to them and they don't get bored and lose interest in what you're saying. Now, let's talk about the most crucial, potentially, part of the sales call, the part where I see a lot of people like letting things fall apart, and that is closing the sale. So closing is the combination of actually three things, three pieces of the equation. Number one is a seamless transition from the body of the call where you're listening to the client a lot, talking about details, that kind of thing. So a seamless transition from that into the actual closing of the sale. So next is the intake process. We're kind of looping back actually to the beginning of the call, but understanding based on like an intake form or an application, what this person's budget is, how ready they are to make a change. Like understanding all of that is key to going in prepared to the sales call to then 
understand, okay, how much work am I really going to have to put in to somewhat like convince this person that it's like safe to make this decision and that we can work together. So gather as much information as you can on the front end. So you're doing less work on the back end. So your intake process is huge here. And then the last thing you're adding to this little equation is your onboarding. You need to make sure that the onboarding process is very clear to explain and implement. When you are closing a sale, if you get someone who's like, yeah, I want to do it, like what's next? And then what's next is this confusing, very disorganized mixture of things they need to complete. And you're not exactly sure how you're even going to get it in their hands. Then they're going to like ghost you. That's when we get into the space where my clients are like, oh, well, somebody said yes, but then they, I never heard from them again. And I'm like, well, did we onboard them effectively? No. Okay. Let's work on that. Right. So onboarding is huge. What does somebody need to do when they say yes? Okay. Immediately. How are we talking about payments? How are we talking about contracts? How are we talking about booking in for first sessions and getting them started with information? What's that whole procedure? Again, that's something I teach in my mentorships, but onboarding is huge and it could be a subject in and of itself for video. So I'm gonna quickly have my editor actually pop on the screen here, um, all of our equations, like one on top of the other. So you can screenshot this if you're curious. And this is a really good thing to have in mind. If you are like looking to make an investment into your business, you know there's a missing piece, you know you're not closing sales. If you're looking at any pieces of the equation and you're like, I have no idea how to do that and I know that's a weak spot for me or a totally missing link in, altogether, that's where you look to make an investment. If you're counting two, three, four or more things on this equation list that you're like, I don't know how to do any of that stuff, then a comprehensive, like more in-depth mentorship will solve so many problems for you. And again, that's exactly what I do. And my general interest form is linked down below so I can recommend to you exactly, okay, how are we gonna get you to a place where you know what you need to know without you overspending time and finances to get there? Again, the link to book in a free call with me is available when you submit that form. It doesn't commit you to a mentorship, just allows you to get on the call with me. So. I hope this is helpful for you guys. I personally love seeing information laid out in this way where it's like very, you know, do this and then this. And if you do that, then this will happen. Like, I think that's really, really helpful. I think that's like this, the STEM major in me. Um, but you guys let me know if there is a specific thing I talked about today that I should make a whole video about that in particular. And I'm happy to do that and make sure you're subscribed. I have a ton of really good trainings coming this month and next month. I've been feeling very like creative and inspired and you guys have been asking me great questions in my DMs. And so it's been really fun and I have a lot of good stuff coming up. So subscribe. Thank y'all for being here. Go build the business of your dreams starting today. I believe in you so much and I'm here to help if you need it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all.